Zach, do you know what happened to my package? I left it right here. <laughs> so we did get something pretty fun in the mail. This is the Comica Boom XU. It even came with this little handwritten note. That's very thoughtful to include a nice little note. It comes in this nice little carrying case. It comes with four microphones and a receiver. Plus you get a sticker, a warranty card, and a user manual. Although. I don't think most people will be needing it. These units are very self-explanatory. It's fine. It's okay. One of the biggest questions that everybody asks, you know, what's the range like on these? How does it perform when you have frequencies bouncing all over the place? What is the interference like? What's the noise like? Well, we're gonna put that to the test with the Kamika. Yes, I apologize. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. It is the Kamika Boom XU Quo, not Qua. You're gonna hear me say that later in the video. I am very sorry. Kamika Boom XU Quo. Anyway, we're gonna see how far we can get. This is the same location that we tested with the Hollyland Lark and the Rode Wireless Go. So it should be a pretty good controlled environment to see how this one stacks up. Let's get to it. All right, Caleb, we're gonna back up. And if I recall, the Hollyland made it uh, to like this tree up here. Cause I, I made it like a really long way with the Rode Wireless Go. So whenever I start, you just give me a hauler, uh, let me know. If, if, if anything, like he's going on. Uh, nothing. Bad yeah, right here. Right here. Oh, well, actually, it's kind of. I'm still talking. You can't hear me. It's, we're going to come a little closer then. With the dedicated extended antenna, with being able to do a frequency scan, you know, I was hoping for a little bit more from these, but it, it looks to be somewhat on par, if not a little bit uh, lower for range when you compare it to, say, the Holly Landlark 150. That's it for range test. Looks like it's uh, kind of at the bottom of the totem pole here as far as units go. It's going to be more of a studio controlled environment. You're not going to be able to use it in a place where you have to have a lot of distance unless you're really able to keep a centralized point with your transmitter. So there you have it. Let's get back to the studio. Going on to the actual layout of the unit, it's a little bit bigger than the Rode Wireless Go, and it's a lot bigger than the Hollyland Lark. One of the biggest differences you'll notice is the microphone slot on this is this little cube shaped unit. And I actually hated that at first. I did not like it. I thought, man, that's a really weird way to mount a microphone. Other units just have it embedded inside of the actual uh, transmitter. But when I looked at the actual wind sleeve, this made a lot more sense. Oh, that's not good. The case is stuck. I didn't plan for this. The wind sleeves actually fit really well over these. Basically, they just slip right over. And on a unit like the Rode Wireless Go, especially with the first generation where the clip was just prone to falling off and then also going over to like the Holy Lens, this slips over the microphone and then you have your uh, outdoor windscreen. It's a pretty typical windscreen. Another thing is that the quality of these is definitely on par with the Rode Wireless Go and the Holy Land Lark. Sounds very similar. I am incredibly impressed by both the onboard microphone here and the built-in port. They worked very well in all of our tests. Moving on to build quality, these are a plastic style case. They are a, a brushed plastic, we might call it, to kind of give it a feel of aluminum. The one thing that is kind of concerning to me is this microphone. You can only move it one way. It only rotates one way. I am always kind of afraid of catching it and breaking it uh, every time I open it and close it because you can kind of hyper extend it on the closing side. So just something to kind of be cautious of uh, as you use it. This transmitter has a accessory shoe mount on the back of it. Now, in my opinion, this is a little bit backwards because the transmitter is something that you'd usually hook up to, you know, somebody's belt. 
so it makes sense for it to have a belt clip but the issue that i'm facing is that this has a traditional wire belt clip on it and then you have to go and use the accessory this slide-in accessory kind of like the sony's and the sennheiser's have this is something that i feel like this the receiver end probably would have benefited a little bit more than the transmitter end to have um the plastic shoe mount on it. I guess the other benefit of this is that if you break this, you can just get a different one and swap it out. Whereas I suppose this is a little more uh, difficult to swap out. Something else on the build quality that I noticed that was kind of a bummer is that there is not a 1 8 inch locking thread on here. Instead, the microphones that they provide you with have a different locking mechanism. Um, it's not quite standard, but it has this little plastic tab and then it locks in with this tab as well. So it kind of holds it in place a little bit more. Still with other microphones like the Deity, not that you'd be using a more expensive microphone with a less expensive receiver, it is nice to have the option of a threaded lock. But this is a nice complementary feature that uh, is built into it and it's a little different, but it works well, especially if you're using the mics that came with it. Moving on to the build quality of the case, you saw that, uh, well, I had some issues with the zipper earlier. That's the first time I've ever actually had that issue. Oh, that's not good. The case is stuck. I don't know if it's because I closed it too fast or if I crunched it down as I closed it and the fabric got caught, but there is one thing that I wish this case had. It's probably because the Holy Lens have spoiled me so much, but I really miss having a case with a USB-C charger built into it. That lets you just stick your units in and not have to worry about them charging. So in lieu of a case that charges it, they've included this USB-A to three prong USB-C uh, charging cord that you can charge three of your devices with at the same time. I know that I've seen some on Amazon that are four prong and it's a little disappointing that you can't charge all five of the units at the same time because it's nice to just set it and forget it. So you'd have to get another one of these cables. Maybe it's supposed to come with two of them. Mine came with one. This is directly off the Amazon listing. This is what everybody else should be coming with as well. Now I want to talk about using the microphones themselves. I will say they're easy to use, just like the Rode Goes, just like the Holy Land Larks, but they are a little bit more to set up the initial uh, time that you use them, with the difference here being that they are more like a Sony or a Sennheiser pack where you actually have to scan and find the frequency. You go into the menu, there's an auto scan feature, and you can go through any of the- She did! She did. Jack, can you tell what that says? Oh, no, I mean, I- Kind of, but not clearly. It's... You go into the menu, there's an auto scan feature, and you can go through any of the four uh, frequencies that you're gonna be using for your different uh, microphones, perform an auto scan. It will find the best channel for you to use. From there, you can go back to your main menu, go to sync, and then assign that frequency to your transmitters uh, through the infrared port that's on the side. Basically, that works just by holding them next to each other. You uh, press sync, it'll transmit it over, and that's all there is to it. The problem with this is that it doesn't come out of the factory synced with each unit. Kind of a bummer going through that. Uh, I mean, that's something you should do when you go to a location the first time anyway, is rescan and see what the best channel to use is. Um, that's just a good habit to get into. Something else to consider is that if you're using the Holy Land Lark or the Rode Wireless Go, those run on 2.4 gigahertz frequency. These run on the 500 uh, megahertz frequency range. Another feature that this microphone has that I really like is the fact that it has four channels. This would be incredibly useful if you're doing something like a podcast or if you were maybe doing a live show or you uh, didn't have a dedicated sound operator, then you could at least run all four lines separately and you don't have to worry about having, you know, a hundred packs. Well, that's a hyperbole, but having four uh, separate receivers and four separate transmitters that you have to manage. It would be very useful for a smaller scale production, uh, especially at the price point. Something else that I really like is how easy it is to access the volume settings. Seriously, you hit the set button, which brings you to your menu, hit down, and then you can individually adjust the volume of all of your different transmitters. So if you have one person that's being louder than the other, you can go back and wirelessly adjust that. It is nice to be able to adjust that on your mix side because that kind of makes this its own mixer. Speaking of mixer, this has the ability to output every single input it has the ability to output every single transmitter separately, meaning that you have one port for A and B, one port for C and D, and then one master mix port to send all of it out together. It's like a little cell phone. 
hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Like I mentioned earlier, all of these have USB-C on them. That's what they use to charge. And next to the USB-C port, you'll find a reset hole. This is where you can insert like a paper clip or something, I'm assuming. Uh, that means that it's possible for these to lock up. I haven't seen it. That brings me to one gripe that I have about the design of this. Now, when you want to assign mute on your transmitter, you press and hold this little microphone button. You'll see it flash and eventually turn red. That means that you're muted. To unmute, you do the same thing. If you had somebody holding this in their pocket, it would be reasonably easy to hit the mute button or even worse, the low cut filter button. Seriously, just pressing the power button toggles the low cut filter on and off, which means if your actor or actress bumps up against something and hits the button on here, while it won't mute them, suddenly either losing or gaining the low end of your frequency thanks to that low cut filter. So it's something that I, I wish that the buttons were inset or that uh, they were on a different part of the case where they're more difficult to bump. Now there's one last thing I wanna talk about. Well, one last thing, it's one category, it's two things. One microphone compatibility to all the stuff that came with it. It's a lot, seriously. All of that was in this one case. Like there is so much stuff in here. I'm gonna separate it. Now there's a lot that gets packed inside this little case when it gets delivered. There are, of course, your four transmitters, your one receiver, you have four microphones, one for each transmitter, and on each of those microphones, you have an alligator clip, you have the uh, locking mechanism that they developed, and then you also have the uh, windscreen that can go directly over it. You have the four windscreens that go over the uh, transmitters themselves. You have a TRRS to TRS cable for breaking it out into a phone. You also get this TRS to 2XLR, which essentially breaks out left and right. Now, if you wanted to break out all four of your channels, you'd have to get another one of these. You have a TRS to TRS coiled cable for breaking it out into a camera. You have your USB-A to USB-C. Uh, there's three USB-C on this one cable and potentially another one of these to uh, get it brought into say a phone or into a mixer and have all of your channels separately. All of that anyway is in this one little case. You get a lot with it and it all packs down pretty nicely. This is about the size of a lunchbox. It's pretty thin. It's got a pretty decent build quality to it as well. It's kind of cute. So that's it. That's the Comica Boom XU Quad, or QUA as it says on the box. It's a pretty nice unit considering that it's got four transmitters and one receiver, four channel outputs, and the ability to input different external microphones into the actual pack. So overall, a very nice, solid, compact little unit. As always, thanks for watching. Stick around. Here's a sneak peek at what's coming up next on our channel. They call me the insulation king. Not on my watch. We do a full tour. Bingo. I think it's our favorite. We're going to Disney World. Let's go now. Let's go. <laughs>